Hey, in this new mini dev vlog from a roguelike game called Case of Umbra, I will show you how I add new blocks to my game. These four new blocks that I show you today are the cobweb, spike block, bone block, and most importantly, the chest, which is by far the most difficult one to make. So let's begin with the simplest one, which is the bone block. This block is so easy to create because it doesn't act any special and that means it's just a normal block that can be mined without any consequences or anything. Even though that might sound boring, which is probably because I'm not even trying to make it sound exciting, it is very important because of the little thing called variety. We always want varied stuff and a new thing every second, which is why I need to add different blocks other than dirt. Or do you really think that this looks more fun than this? Back to the block, I just drew the sprite by preparing one good bone and then reusing that one until I got a block I'm happy with. On top of that, the bone block is a very soft one so a single hit with the pickaxe is enough to break it and we didn't have that so far. So now that you got a feel of the basic process of adding new blocks we are ready to move on to the next block where we need to do a little bit more than this basic pattern. The spike block that I'm now going to add is quite different than a bone one because it does have a special function. If you hit this block, you take damage, which would for example be a great way of protecting a chest when built as a sort of frame. But before I can even think about level design, I need to actually create this block. We can of course skip the whole part of creating the sprites, setting up the block and deciding how hard it is because I just showed you that. And so because of that you can start at the interesting part. I had to do it twice. But anyway, because I'm pretty prepared for blocks just like this, I only had to follow a few simple steps. First I had to create a little script with a function that deals damage to the player. And this script has to sit on the block. Now it comes to the part where I've already prepared some stuff. This is because I already built in an event. So this means I just need to drag that newly created function into the event here in Unity. For those that don't know, events basically call an assigned function from any script sitting on the same object. You can call an event if you type your variable of the event and then dot invoke. So with this less code and some smart preparation of course, it is as easy as that to create this spike block. So for the third one, we finally got something brand new. Because the concept of the cobweb is that if you get stuck in it, you can only destroy this and not any other block around you. This can be dangerous because the cave is slowly collapsing in this game. So you need to be quick and better not be stuck in the cobweb. So the first step, other than the usual sprite stuff, was changing properties and the layer of the block. So it's not colliding with the player. It wouldn't make much sense if the concept was that you get stuck in it, but you can stand on the block and not walk into it from the side. This is why we now have both the block and not colliding block layer. We need two because the collision part of the player movement has to ignore the one for not colliding blocks. But that's not all. I also have to code in the fact of locking the player movement while stuck in a cobweb, so you can only attack the web if you try to move anywhere. Lastly, I also decided to make this a rather hard block so it's really observed by the player as a real threat. So this means there's only one left, the chest. This block is the rarest one in the level generation at this moment, because this can give you a resource like gold or copper a secondary action that I showed you in the last mini devlog or a brand new weapon. This means you can finally obtain new combat items in the game, but making this work was no easy task. It started out as usual by creating visuals, setting up the block and so on, you know the drill. After that I went to the block script where I added a bool to set the block to a chest or not, just like I did with the monster block. For this block it is of course a chest. Then I also added the treasure type variable so that the script knows if the chest should give a a weapon, secondary attack or some resources. Next I called the get loot function and in there I made the chest give a random weapon from a pool of weapons. I've stored this list in a separate table so that I can switch this for every different biome in the future. This way we can also add biome specific weapons. Now that works but there's a slight issue. You can have the same weapon multiple times, which I definitely don't want, so I need to prevent that. My first tries didn't work because I'm just more used to arrays than lists in Unity. I need to store the weapon however as a list because only lists can be changed during runtime. After that everything should work, but the game crashed every single time I hit a chest. Why is that the case? I had to search for that one whole day, but I'm telling you the short work. I accidentally filled the weapon pool table with the three weapons that I already had in the 
inventory. So I luckily created a situation where there's no weapon left. This made the function call itself so many times until there was a so-called stack overflow. I'm not too sure what exactly this is, but I think it's just that a certain region of memory gets full, which returns in the game crashing. The way I then fixed it in the end is that if there's this situation, we just tell the script to give the player some resources instead. Now that we can obtain weapons, I did the same for secondary actions, but it was a little easier because you can only hold one of these at a time, so there are no lists I need to be worrying about or even worse, stack overflows. And unfortunately, I ran out of time before recording this video, so you can't get resources in chests for now and there's no UI pop-up when opening a chest so I'll definitely keep you updated on that in the following devlogs. So that's it for the four new blocks in Caves of Umbra and I hope you liked them. If you want to see more on this game make sure to subscribe to the channel. It would really mean the world to me. See you next time. Cheers!